This program was brought to you by Organo Gold. Organo Gold is a health and wellness company that provides healthy coffees, teas, and chocolate. All one has to do is consume the available products to get all the available benefits. One can also share these products with others to help them improve their health as well. For more information, call 703-359-5642 or visit the website basillamba.com. And now, Fairfax Breakfast Club with your host, Basil Lemba. Welcome to the Fairfax Breakfast Club show. My name is Basil Lemba and I will be your host. The Fairfax Breakfast Club is a weekly program in which we bring to you valuable and workable know-how you can use to improve your networking skills and grow your business. We always start the show with a quote and today's quote is Dress shabbily and they remember the dress. Dress impeccably and they remember the woman. And that is from Coco Channel. With us today in the studio, we have someone whose job is to help people dress impeccably. Her name is Erin Sartori. Now this is interesting because what does Sartoria, Sartoria means? What does Sartori mean? Mm -hmm. Dressing for men. Oh. Do you know that? I just learned, I just learned something else. Yeah, yeah, I really understand <laughs> sartorial, meaning how the way men dress and dress properly. I was wondering if there's a connection with what you do, probably not. No. <laughs> <laughs> it just means it's meant to be. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> just means I have a good name. <laughs> you are correct, very much appropriate. You should use that in the marketing yeah. material. <laughs> I, I'm going to that down. <laughs> I like that. Yes, Irene, tell us, how do you get you come to get into the dressing business, the fashion business? Um, well, it was something I've always, that I feel like I was born loving. Okay. <laughs> um, something I've always been good at and into. Um, and just, and I, I never went to school for, specifically for fashion. I was in PR, mm -hmm. um, and my interest really started in, in college. Um, and then, I, one of my, I started a business called Positive Dog Walks years ago, so I have, I have a dog walking business, and through one of my clients, uh, she has had a business in the clothing, the fashion industry for over 25 years. Hmm. Um, so that's how I was introduced to this specific business. Okay. And then I, I just, it kind of happened, um, I got a good opportunity that I was able to start myself, mm -hmm. and um, I, I took it. Okay. Very I good. felt like it was something that I've always wanted to do and I should be doing and so I should go for it. Okay. And since how long do you have the business? Um, I have about a year now. Okay. And who are your typical clients? Typical clients, well I wouldn't say that there's a typical, that's oh, about, there's not a typical client, that's always, the, that's mm -hmm. a bad um, way to Whoever to, want, to who who wanted to dress properly, I guess maybe I should, I should say. Well, um, business women, professional women, it doesn't, do, it doesn't have to be, but mm -hmm. uh, those are, those are the, the ones that seem to be pulled toward our, our company and, um, and the clothing that we sell. It's high-end clothing, high-quality, luxu luxury. Mm -hmm. So those are the women who travel, they travel a lot, they, they need easy care fabrics and um, timeless, timeless classic fashion. Mm -hmm. um, so those, I guess that would be the typical client, but we, we try to broaden include, that, yes. Mm -hmm. Include as many people as mm -hmm. possible. But is it only women or men as well? Um, there, it can be men as well. They, there are a few um, pieces, uh, not shirts. A lot, not a lot, man, not right. a lot, just, just a few. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's not a large selection, but uh, we have tri there have been um, seasons where there have been some men, some pieces for, mm -hmm. for the men, um, shirts, basically shirts. So. And, and the name of the company is? Doncaster okay. is the name of the clothing company, and then okay. Sartori Style is my specific business, okay. my personal business. Gotcha. My personal 
I'm a personal stylist and wardrobe consultant okay. representing Doncaster. Very good. So how do you work? How do process work? Uh, well, I, the process of... How do you meet somebody, you go to the house, or you take the measurement, uh, how does that work? It's very, possibilities are endless. It's very flexible. Um, they can come to my house. I, there's a studio in Tyson's Corner um, that we, that a, a lot of the consultants work out of. So we can meet if it's convenient. It's all about what's most convenient for the client. Um, we're all about saving time saving women time and money, making it as convenient as possible mm -hmm. to shop. Mm -hmm. So um, they'll come to the studio, we'll meet for an hour, hour mm -hmm. appointment and do just, you know, fittings. They'll try on, um, what I like to do is pick out, once I get to know them, I kind of get to know, I do a questionnaire mm -hmm. and I get all their information um, about their likes and their lifestyle and dislikes. Uh, and then from there I go around and I pick out everything that I think would suit them mm -hmm. or suit their lifestyle or if they have a special occasion or uh, a s specific event that they need to be dressed for. Um, and then I show them everything that I've picked out and they'll say yes, 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 no, or they'll just try on everything. And then we take it from there and that's when they, that's how they kind of weed out what, what works for them and what doesn't. And a lot of times there are, the good thing about that is a lot of times they will not, they'll, they wouldn't have picked that themselves. They wouldn't have picked those types of things. So they'll, they're open to most of the time trying on what I pick out for them. And then sometimes that it, they're surprised mm -hmm. and it works. Okay. Uh, but then, but yes, it can be, um, we can go to their house. I can go to their work, their office during lunch. Um, whatever, really whatever suits their needs, that's, that's how we do it. Okay. So we're, we're focused, very focused on um, saving uh, on the service, so saving, saving time and convenience. Okay. Uh, so the dresses or the clothing are already made or do you tailor them to the person? They are, they're, they're already made mm -hmm. and um, we've we fit women zero to 24. So that's a very, um, it sets us apart a, a lot because uh, it's a very big range. Mm -hmm. um, the fashion industry often neglects the women's sizes and the petite sizes. So there's they not as, <laughs> yeah, they, they just don't, um, you know, they, for some reason they don't style, they don't make the same styles, the same cuts. So oh, when you mean zero to 24, you mean the exact same thing can be found from? For size zero as for size 24. Oh, okay, yeah, that's so, okay. and that's, that's um, pretty unique in the fashion industry. And um, I, the, a well-known women's model, plus size model, um, Alexandra Vose, she has said that she just loves Doncaster. She loves modeling for Doncaster because she can. She feels that she can dress the same as her skinny girl friends. So she can wear the same exact style and feel just as fabulous. So an there's not an opportunity to get even. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So and then there's petite. So we have um, petite, Missy, and women's. So they're all. Everybody has different. They're all. They all fit differently. Mm. You know, petite women have a hard time finding clothes that fit as well because, you know, the shorter hems mm. or the, um, the rise in the pants, the, even the shoulder cut, the, where the bust lays. So that's all, that's all what I do in, in fitting and finding the proper, the proper fit. Okay. I have a question yeah. which you don't necessarily have to know the answer, but why do, are some of the size neglected and not taken care of? I'm sorry for that. Why are some of the size neglected and not taken care of? Because there's not a whole lot of people in that category? Uh, you know, I pro there probably is a, a good answer for that. I, I'm not entirely <laughs> sure why they're not. To, I, I just know that it's a, um, the, the women's clients usually complain about not having as cute uh, or stylish pieces. Mm -hmm. um, they, I am not, maybe there's not. You don't have to have the answer, yeah. I'm just curious, I'm just, I'm just curious because I've, I've I don't think it's that there's not enough. Oh really? Um, I think it's that. The stylist does not want to bother with that, uh, that kind of body or what? 
I guess we never know. We're guessing. Right. You can help us guess over here. Yeah, so. they, they probably don't um, want to invest in the, you know, maybe they take more of a loss of in, in style or creating those sizes, and then if they don't get sold, or I, that's a total guess, but <laughs> I will look into a that. Question I'll we get take back. up some other time. <laughs> Okay. Let's leave that. Let's now, let I'm that go. now I'm going to wonder, and I'm going to go <laughs> dig and find out that answer. I'll get, you let me know what the answer. <laughs> what do you consider your biggest challenge? Um, my biggest challenge, I think, is having enough time in a day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think that's it. Probably. I mean, that's why this this specific um, job is such a, I mean, hell, every, every woman, everybody probably doesn't have enough time in the day to get the things done that they need to, and especially when you're a mother, mm-hmm. yeah. have a job, you, know, you have 20 different hats you're wearing mm-hmm. during the day, um, so mine is definitely having enough time mm-hmm. in a day to be able to, to, to devote to raising the family mm-hmm. and getting all the family stuff done, and then also devoting to my business to continue making my, mm-hmm. growing my business, True. and not let that fall mm-hmm. on the back burner. So, okay. So I think that, and also probably, um, you know, kind of over getting over the um, self doubt sometimes is a is a challenge. Saying like, oh, maybe I shouldn't be doing this, and this is this. Isn't this is crazy or this is too hard to do? You know, mm-hmm. kind of get over that and keep finding ways to to make things work. Okay, I understand. Mm-hmm. And what would be the biggest the accomplishment? Is most the most proud of? Well, my fam, my family. <laughs> I have to say, I'm very. You know, my family is um, a big accomplishment. My home, I, I. Uh, I'm into the decora- interior, you know, yeah. decorating and styling as well. H- hence, the Sartori style is is both clothing, fashion, and. Um, you do interior design. Okay. I dabble, <laughs> yes, <laughs> <laughs> but that is where I I intend to um, make the, the business. The yeah, yes, to both both areas of that of that style. So cover all style. <laughs> well, you know, it's, um, it's an interesting subject, uh, very much fascinating. It's close to me, I'm an architect, just so you know. And what I like the most, I, in fact, is interior designing. Oh, you yourself? Is yeah. it Really? Yeah. Well, that's, I, that's interesting. I don't promote that's that cool. as much, but I do it. And I guess for friends, I don't do it. I don't, I don't have shingle, but... Uh, the, the the work I'm the most proud of in my lifetime is my own apartment, which I designed, mm-hmm. with design. Oh, I, great, I, blew, yeah. I blew myself away from yeah. it. Uh, you can that's come to my house and <laughs> 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 critique my <laughs> no, seriously, <laughs> review. Ser- no, seriously, I did a tremendous amount of work on that. And anybody who worked in there, it catches your attention. Uh, you sense that the works was put in the board because I'm an architect mm-hmm. and what have you. And then the beautiful thing in that specific case is because I could go, f- I was free reign. Sometimes when you have a guest, you got to get an agreement, we do this, do that. Mm-hmm. It was me, I am the guest and mm-hmm. the person designed it. So therefore, there was no limitation as to what could be done. Mm-hmm. It works out beautifully. But also, my favorite architect, his name is Frank Lord White. Frank was designing clothing. Also, the two go together. I guess it's mm-hmm. sum up under the word art. Because once you knit, it's kind of like, it's, I guess the process, we're talking about creating, that's what it is. Mm-hmm. That, even when you dress, dressing is about creating, looking at, putting things together and what have you. And same thing when it comes to interior design, it's the, the exact same concept. Mm-hmm. Uh, the same rules apply, coming under the umbrella of art. So I'm not surprised when mm-hmm. you tell me you want yeah, to do interior fair. design, mm-hmm. because uh, it's not that far, really, you know, because <laughs> <laughs> one easily goes from one to the other one. But guess what? Interior design is what? It's the design, the color, the rhythm, mm-hmm. what have you, is the exact same goes underlying hand principle, hand. yes. Uh, the, usually the fashion, tr- well always, the fashion trends pretty much go hand in hand mm-hmm. with home decorating trends. Well, Ralph Lauren doing mm-hmm. both and what have mm-hmm. you, and so mm-hmm. it, it is that world over there. Yeah, you can find you know the, tre- the winter trends, 
that are going on now mm -hmm. for for fashion. Same same things apply for decorating. Mm -hmm. and it's I think that's why I love it so much. I loved I have a lot of um, art artists in the family in the oh, in nice. the blood. So I've always felt like. Why can't I draw? Why can't I paint? <laughs> and now I feel like I have found my art. <laughs> I found my artistry. <laughs> That's great. That's excellent. You should definitely do that. Uh, we, the, the culture as a whole needs more people working in the field of arts. Mm -hmm. Not enough. And I don't think arts is understood. I know that I don't think this facts are not understood. When school today have project b budget issue, well, what goes first? Arts, we call it art. A great humanitarian named El Ron Hibar wrote, the greatness of a culture is measured by its dreams. Its dreams are dreamed by artists. Hmm. No single profession has more impact on the planet than art, none. I believe that. Period. Really there's not even a comp there's not, not even close. Mm -hmm. If you get there, care to take a look at it, one of the biggest technological accomplishments in this country is man landing on the moon, 1960. All right. If you look throughout that, science fiction boomed in the 30s and 40s. <laughs> But what happens is that the artist write a story, the engineer grab the book, reads it, and says, let me see how I can make this a reality. Mm. You understand? Mm -hmm. Art precedes is all. That's barely understood in our culture. Mm -hmm. and, then, and that's just one example, and I can give you one example after example after example. You're just full of great knowledge. <laughs> well, I try not to be. <laughs> full of interesting facts. <laughs> the show we have here today is part of, uh, it is a breakfast club show. It comes under the foundation that is called the BL Competence Foundation. And that comes, the competence, the foundation handles arts, education, business, and sportsmanship. And the biggest area of the foundation is arts. That's where we put the more attention, the more money, and what have you. And on our show over here, we have several artists. I have a lady playing harp, I have a singer, and what have you. We bring them in. Even though we have very much more business people coming, but art is the pillar of it all. Hmm. That's what I'm interested in. By the way, we didn't plan this conversation by part. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we're going over there, but that'll give me the opportunity to bring that back, put it in there. Mm -hmm. You're going to hear when we have uh, Olympic Games in the country, when we have the World Cup in the country, what do they show you? Art. They never go and say they have a widget or would you would. They show the art because instinctively, if you want to engage a culture or civilization, you go to the art. We know the Egyptian civilization was big. Why? Because of the pyramid. Their arts. Everything else, the widget, did they have any? We don't even find them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? You can go to Egypt and look, look, you ain't finding a piece of metal anywhere. <laughs> you understand? Mm -hmm. But the pyramid are standing right there. Yeah. <laughs> you see? So that's what I didn't know you was in the field of art, but I, I understand. I am very much interested into fashion and what have you. That's the reason I want to have you at, at the expo uh, coming out. It makes a total difference. The way somebody dress can depress the people around them, or it can raise the spirit. Mm -hmm. And see, when you um, when you asked me about that, my biggest challenge, and I said sometimes to myself, mm -hmm. that's an example of, um, with the Business Expo, I, I immediately was thinking, that might be a great opportunity, I should probably do that, and then I thought, well, I don't know if that, if I would, you know, if people would be interested in that, or if I would be the right type of business to be there, mm -hmm. and so I, you know, I almost kind of wrote it off before it even, but I'm... I'm going for it, going through with it, and you never know what what opportunities that can bring, and who you can be exposed to, and who you can meet at those 
type of things. Everybody is interested in style and look, dressing well and feeling good about themselves and being confident, right? So, mm -hmm. well, you know, business people mm -hmm. there as well. Um, research actually over the past few years has shown that um, women, professional women with the appropriate image and personal style, it actually contributes to their success, to their career success. So, that's it's all about that. <laughs> Well, it makes sense because you don't only remember the quote that I had from Coco Channel. You hear mm -hmm. the quote? Mm -hmm. It's like you go to a restaurant. The restaurant is not just the food. The way the food is put together on the plate and the color, it has mm -hmm. to be thought through by a real chef. A chef does not just plant a piece of meat and dump it on your plate and say, here, have it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work that way. It can be a good piece of meat, but still they dress it, they put this, they put that, da, 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 and then they put it in front of you. Mm -hmm. Same thing, that's what the clothing the is. The decent drizzle, the exactly. accessories, yes. <laughs> the bling. And the bling. <laughs> when you see the new style, you say, I gotta have this. <laughs> <laughs> you get what I'm saying? It's part of it, quote unquote, for the back of it, it's the package. Same thing. You cannot just go, you go into a business meeting and then you say, what is there? Good, grab it and put it on and go. No, you get, it's part of the package. Mm -hmm. It is a presentation, a respect for yourself. And also you do it for the other because you don't walk around all day looking at you. It is for them. You got to give them a good image. Just mm -hmm. like the chef take, make sure that the plate is put together. Mm -hmm. It's understanding, in a lack of a better word, maybe the strong understanding life. That's how things work. It's not just because I dress how I dress. No, it doesn't. It doesn't it doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. I dress how I dress. Like I'm, I'm going to go to. Oh, we're going to the gym. Then I put my suit. No, you don't put a suit when you go to the gym. You put <laughs> a sweater. Okay. When you go into a business meeting, you don't put a sweater. You put a suit. Right. You get what I'm saying? He's thinking and seeing what's fitting, what works. Mm -hmm. That Did actually, you? I'm sorry. Go ahead. That actually br brings to mind um, another point of, about the business and, and my goal, my job is um, a lot of women feel that they are, or their fear is not being dressed appropriately or being underdressed for certain things. So, you know, that's they wake up in the morning and they don't know what to wear. They have that fear of what should I put on? What should I wear to this? Or so that, um, that helps, you know, it helps them feel prepared and, and, and appropriate and confident knowing that they are smartly dressed. Mm -hmm. Do you give seminars? Together. No, <laughs> I don't, well, I don't give seminars. It seems to me that that's a good place to start. Yeah. Or maybe you need to handle yourself to accept the idea that you should do seminars. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's where you should start, not even doing the seminar. Handle yourself so you can do seminar because that's a perfect entrance point. They have to be educated. Mm -hmm. So you got to gather the data on that, give it to them, and then they become customers after a while. But it's a service that you're providing, giving them the statistic you give and what have you. And then, because it's not an issue. It's just a matter of really, I mean, there are issues like the Philippines, the typhoon in Philippines, that's an issue. But not figuring out what to dress is like is no issue whether because you can go to a consult consultant and solve the problem. Mm -hmm. Well, women who have women at, who have been asked this question, what is the biggest challenge mm -hmm. um, you find when shopping? Um, almost all of them answered not being able to find something that looks good, not finding anything that looks good on them, and that's because you know that they're not finding the right fit or the right the right cut on them, um, the right color. The right cut may be tailor-made, but mm -hmm. I think it's much more, a, I think if you ask me, it's much more education, taking the time to take a look and confronting it. And mm -hmm. that's where you come in. You have right, to educate exactly. them regard mm -hmm. to the different cut, the different color and what have you. It seems to me that that's, uh, that would be your entrance point, the point of agreement with them. Right. Well, because when they put something on and they say, oh, I don't like that, that looks terrible. And then they just put it back and give up. But then where I come in, I would say, well, why does this look terrible? Why would you, why does, do you think this looks terrible? Try, because, you know, the, the shoulders don't lay right or the, the color does, you know, it, it doesn't do anything for, it washes you out. Or, and then you, I pick something else, here, try this. Mm -hmm. And then they try that on and they say, oh, yeah, 
I like that, but that looks great. So that's kind of, rather than giving, giving up and getting frustrated, mm -hmm. you have somebody there to suggest other, other options. Mm -hmm. And the, my expert, my expert opinion, <laughs> my expert in, advice, I guess. Okay. Well, uh, I think in this, it is typical in this country, not in Europe. I live in Europe for 10 years. It is also a cultural thing. Here, the dress is like secondary. Or, uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it needs to be brought in the front burner. It is not. It's not there. It's not understood. That's the problem. They need to be educated on it. And taste it, then understand their pressure and do it. Mm -hmm. In some other countries, a different story, totally, completely different story. Mm -hmm. Probably this need another, another uh, two or three shows to, to yeah. cover it <laughs> completely. Well, in the Doncaster, Doncaster fabrics are European. You know, they're they're yeah. luxury European fabrics, and so it's focused on quality and workmanship mm -hmm. that um, you can't find in retail. Okay. stores around here so um, but you know women a lot American women are finally coming around to to um, seeing quality over quality you know quality that's in their closet rather than quantity mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of where we are with Doncaster you know the the buy spend some extra money on a beautiful blouse or Am I running out of time? <laughs> yes, we are almost. Thank you very much. Looking forward to seeing you again. Bye bye. <laughs>